Hey, it's Dr. Jay Tita, and welcome to Metabolic Living's Immunity Upgrade Blueprint. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the AIM process in depth, how to assess, investigate, and modify, just like a detective, to boost the metabolism and strengthen the immune system. We're going to go through four different scenarios that you'll be dealing with, and we're going to talk about the best approach when Schmeck and fat loss are both eluding you at the same time. Now remember, the best defense is a strong immune system. And how do you get a strong immune system? You develop a strong, resilient metabolism because that's what provides the energy to fuel your immune system so it can do its job fighting microbes like bacteria, viruses, and fungus. All right, let's get into the lecture today. We're going to be talking about the AIM process, assess, investigate, and modify. So if you'll remember, we talked about this idea that when you go on a program, when you're trying to change your body, you're going to have two things that you're going to be assessing. SHMEC, which is an acronym for sleep, hunger, mood, energy, and cravings, and body change. Did you lose fat, stay the same, or gain fat? And those two things are going to tell us something and how we're going to respond. And so in the end, what we want is we want both, right? We want Schmeck in check and we want fat loss. So in this first scenario, that's what we get. Our biofeedback sensations, sleep, hunger, mood, energy, and craving, Schmeck is in check, meaning all those things are balanced and under control. Plus, we're losing fat. So what do we do? We've assessed what happened. Now we need to sort of investigate, and then we modify. So what do we do here? Well, we do nothing, and this is absolutely critical to understand. The metabolism is an adaptive, changeable, and creative sort of system. It does not stay the same. It is not static. And so this is a very elusive place for the metabolism. It's sort of the Goldilocks zone. We've got hormonal metabolic balance and we've got calorie reduction. We know we have the hormone balance because Schmeck is in check and we know we've achieved a calorie deficit because we've lost fat. We do not want to do anything at this point. Oftentimes people will try to push harder or do something different and push them right out of the, this state that we want them in. And so in this scenario, you do nothing. You ride it for as long as possible. Now here's another scenario. Let's say Schmeck is in check, so hormones are in balance, but you're not losing fat or maybe even gaining fat. What do you do then? Well, here is a progress report on how to do this. First, you can cut starch, and this is what we recommend. Cut starch at most meals. The reason why we do this is not because starch is bad or sugar is bad. It's just that most people in their diets are eating mostly starch. When you look at people and the way they eat, they're consuming up to 50% of their meals as carbohydrates. So while there's nothing wrong with carbohydrate, it's one of the easiest things to cut since we're already eating most of that stuff anyway. The other thing you can do is you can move starch to one meal if the cutting starch down at all meals doesn't work. For example, if your Schmeck is in check and you're not losing fat, maybe you cut out carbohydrates across the board. Maybe you reduce them by 10%. Let's say that doesn't work. Maybe then what you do is you limit all your carbohydrates to breakfast or you limit all your carbohydrates to dinner. Now, what we're doing here is not magic. It's just a tricky way to reduce the amount you consume. If you're used to consuming 200 grams of carbohydrate a day, it's very likely you've been consuming those over several meals. You would be very unlikely to be able to eat that much at just one meal. So you can see that this is just a little tricky way of really cutting down calories. Now, if the starch changes don't work, remember, we always want to see what your body thrives best with. Is it more starch-driven or is it more fat-driven? So if the starch doesn't work, those changes, you can cut back on fat. Again, cutting starch and fat, these are the main sources of calories in most people's diets. You also could begin to eat less frequently. You can search for trigger foods, and by trigger foods, what we mean is foods that when you eat them, cause you to eat much more. Or, and you can start to monitor calories and macronutrients very closely by using something like MyFitnessPal or some kind of tracking mechanism. The important thing to remember here is that the most 
important aspect of this is to get your hormones in balance. Get your Schmeck in check. Make it so sleep, hunger, mood, energy, and cravings are supporting you. Your metabolism, your immune system is in a place of strength. And then you can begin to push on it. And the truth is here, we presented this in a one, two, three, four, five, six step process. But the truth is, remember what we talked about, the Bruce Lee effect. Absorb what is useful, discard what is not, and always bring with you what is uniquely your own. So you may already know that you do better on fat or carbohydrates. Or you may already know that you, when you count calories and start watching macronutrient intake, things figure themselves out for you. So feel free to jump through these steps as you would like. But the point here is there are many things you can do here. When your hormones are in a place of balance, when Schmeck is in check, it makes it easier to push on the metabolism and the immune system to get the results you want. Now, what if Schmeck is not in check, but you're also losing fat? This is a very tricky place to be. This is the dieter, right? Dieters oftentimes experience this. They might be losing some weight, but their sleep, their hunger, their mood, their energy and cravings are out of check. And this is a very tenuous place to be. This is the yo-yo dieter's trap. When you're in this place, you may achieve short-term results, but we can guarantee they will not last long. And 95% of people who try to do this end up failing. 66% end up fatter. So you do not want to be here. You want to do everything you can to get Schmeck in check. This is where that five-step process we've talked about in other lectures comes into play. The best way to get Schmeck in check first is to add protein, fiber, and water. Lean protein sources, lots of vegetables. If you're not a meat eater, then make it more vegetables. If you are a meat eater, make it more vegetables and lean protein animal sources. Add fat if that doesn't work. If that doesn't work, you can add starch and take out the fat. Again, we're not saying fat or starch are bad. They're not. It's just trying to understand which does better with your system. And if that doesn't work, you add starch and fat, or you can add some snacks. And again, as you get used to this, you can skip through these steps. The point to understand here is that Schmeck must be in check. Otherwise, any results are not going to last or be a disaster and reverse on you. And finally, what happens if Schmeck's not in check and there's no loss or you're actually gaining fat? This is also typical of the couch potato. And so the person who just sits around and does nothing and eats everything they want. Again, the biggest move here, add protein and fiber. You can cut down starch at calories. You can add snacks. You can move starch to one meal. You can modify your fat intake up or down. You can look for foods that are causing you to overeat. Or you can begin to track calories. Now, one of the clinical tools I'll give you here is that whenever Schmeck is not in check, one of the things that you really want to be thinking about is eating more of these kinds of foods and more of these kinds of foods. Now, if you're a meat eater, make use of these lean protein sources. If you're not, you don't need to eat meat. If you're a vegetarian, just simply make sure you're eating more of these. Both these foods and these foods really help to keep Schmeck in check without adding extra calories so that when Schmeck's not in check and you're gaining fat, Moving to these foods and these foods can really do a great job in helping you get Schmeck in check and reduce calories so you can begin getting the results that you want. All right, the key takeaways here. Remember, there's four different scenarios that we went through, and we've given you some ideas of how to look at these scenarios and to adjust. You need to know how to modify your diet based on Schmeck. You're starting to see how important this hormonal metabolic attribute, this biofeedback sensation, sleep, hunger, mood, energy, and cravings that we talk about all the time, it's so important in your ability to modify. Always remember to get Schmeck in check first and foremost. And there's a really good trick. The first move always, the first big clinical tool I can give you, the first clinical pearl is more protein and fiber. That's the best way to get Schmeck in check while also lowering calories. Okay, thanks so much for watching today's episode. Remember, there's still time to join, plus access all of the older material at www.metabolicliving.com. We've got free immune-strengthening workouts meal plans, and recipes for all nutrition types, paleo, keto, vegan, vegetarian, you name it. If you've enjoyed this lecture, please, please, please share this with your friends and your family. Don't forget to follow us at Metabolic Living on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. 
And don't forget, we're all in this together. It's all about boosting your metabolism, strengthening your immune system, and flattening the curve together. Thanks so much for being here, and we'll see you at the next lecture.